Hello and welcome to Apache Kafka tutorial at Learning Journal. In the previous video, we started a multi-node cluster on a single machine. We have also seen some configuration parameters like broker ID, port number and log DIRs. Apache Kafka is a highly configurable system and it provides many configurable parameters. Most of them have a reasonable default. So you don't need to worry about all of them. In this session, I'll cover some key broker configurations. We cannot cover everything. So I have selected some critical parameters for today's discussion. But I recommend that you check the documentation for the complete list. Reading them at least once will give you some idea about available configuration. The overview of available options will help you customize Kafka for your use case. So this is the list of parameters that we will discuss in this session. I am skipping first three because we have already covered them in the previous session. Okay, zookeeper.connect. This parameter takes zookeeper connection string. The connection string is simply a host name with a port number. We already know that Kafka uses Zookeeper for various coordination purposes. So it is critical that every broker knows the Zookeeper address. This parameter is also necessary to form a cluster. What do I mean by forming a cluster? Well, all brokers are running on different systems. How do they know about each other? If they don't know about each other, they are not part of the cluster. So the zookeeper is the connecting link among all brokers to form a cluster. Delete topic enable. What is this one? If you want to delete a topic, you can use topic management tool to delete a topic. But by default, deleting a topic is not allowed. You cannot remove a topic because the default value for this parameter is false. That's a reasonable protection for production environment. But in a development or testing environment, you may want to delete a topic. So if you want Kafka to allow deleting a topic, you need to set this parameter to true. Auto create topics enable. Right. We have already discussed auto create topic feature. If a producer is start sending messages to a non-existent topic, Kafka will create the topic automatically and accept the data. This behavior is suitable for dev environment. But in a production environment, you may want to implement a more controlled approach. You can set this parameter to false and Kafka will stop creating topics automatically. You can create topics manually using topic management tool and no one will be able to send data to a non-existent topic. Default replication factor and num partitions. So these two parameters are quite straightforward. The default values for both of them is one and they are effective when you have auto create topics enabled. So if Kafka is creating your topic automatically, the new topic will have only one partition and a single copy. If you want some other values, you can change the default settings accordingly. Now log retention ms and log retention byte. Okay, these two are critical and not very obvious. So whatever data you send to Kafka, it is not retained by Kafka forever. Kafka is not a database. You don't send data to Kafka for storage so that you can query it later. It is a message broker. It should deliver the data to the consumer and then clean it up. There is no reason to retain messages for longer than needed. Kafka gives you two options to configure the retention period. The default option is retention by time and the default retention period is seven days. So in this case, Kafka will clean up all the messages older than seven days. If you want to change the duration, you can specify your value for log retention MS configuration. Kafka gives you another option to define this retention period. 
you can specify it by size. That's where the second parameter log retention bytes is applicable. But this size applies to partitions. So if you set log retention bytes equal to 1 GB, Kafka will trigger a cleanup activity when the partition size reaches to 1 GB. Remember that it is not a topic size, it's a partition size. So if you specify both of these configurations, the cleanup will start on meeting either of the criteria. Okay, that's it for this session. I believe you are ready to start writing some code. So in next session, we will create a custom producer and send some data to Kafka. Thank you for watching. Keep learning and keep growing.